Welcome to my kitchen, everybody. It must be Tuesday, Cooking with Evie. So glad to have you here today. It is a dark, dreary day here in the Chicagoland area, and it's a great day to be in the kitchen, clearing out the refrigerator, which is what this recipe is doing for me. I have a bunch of seasonal foods, vegetables, produce in there that um, if I don't use up, is going to go bad. So I'm always looking for recipes that I can use that will use up some of those veggies. So uh, I have about a quarter of a head. It was a huge head of cabbage. So this is about a pound of uh, cabbage that I have left over. And I thought, hmm, okay, I'm going to make a variation of a traditional German dish that uh, I had growing up, which was typically a red cabbage, which I also have here, red cabbage with apples and onions. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to be making a dish using smoked paprika. I was lucky enough to get some great smoked paprika when I was on my travels in Europe, and um, it's very pungent. Ooh, it's great. But what you will also do is lend a beautiful red tinge to the dish. So I think I'm going to avoid using the red cabbage and I'm going to stick with the green cabbage. Although this isn't that much cabbage, so coincidentally, <laughs> I had gotten in my CSA some Napa cabbage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the lower end of the Napa cabbage. I'll save this for uh, either, uh, I could even put it in salads because it's a light leaf leaf. leaf. Um, or fry it up in a stir fry later on. So today we're going to be doing that and I'm going to add a little bit of sweetness by adding some apples. I went apple picking and our apples are uh, getting very ripe so I want to use those up as soon as possible. It's interesting when you get apples fresh they don't have that waxy coating on them that sometimes the conventional apples have in the grocery store so they do go uh, bad quicker. They dry out a little bit. So I'm going to try and use those up as quickly as possible. So what I like to do is before I start a dish is get out all of my ingredients, which I've done here. I hope <laughs> we'll make sure. But um, I'm going, I have an onion as well and a clove of garlic. And what I would like to do is prep these first. So I have everything ready when I need them. There's a little bit of brown on this side of the cabbage head, so I'm just going to slice that off. It's just a little bit of oxidation that's occurred in the, where it was cut, but I don't necessarily want that. And I can then go through and slice thinly. It doesn't have to be that thin, actually because I'm gonna be cooking it. So I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker, probably about a quarter to a half inch wide. Or what I can do really quickly is using my food processor, I have an adjustable slicer here. I'm gonna put it on the thickest slice that you can do. You can see that. And put it through there. It's nice when you have these tools to be able to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice my cabbage into sizes that will fit into the processor, into the feed tube here. And give it a quick. There's nothing wrong with doing it by hand or by, if you have a mandolin, a hand mandolin to do the slicing. This is just nice and quick. Save that end. And what I'm going to do is, I washed this off previously. I'm just going to cut off that big end of the Napa. And I'm probably going to take 
about half of this cabbage. I'm going to save this for later. And I'm going to try and figure out how it's going to fit into my feed tube. Let's see, what would be the best way? Uh, let's see. We'll see if this fits. That looks like it'll work. There you go. Right in. One, two, three. Easy. So let me get these pieces in as well. And have them all done at one time. Okay. All right. So it looks like I have whoa, probably got six cups of cabbage here. Put in a bowl separately. Put these end pieces in as well. And uh, let's do our onion next since I have this set up right here. I'm going to, since I have this slicer here, I am going to use that. to slice up my onion. I made it a little bit thinner, the slice, on, I'm giving it on four on my slicer here. And I'm just gonna cut off the tops and the bottoms of my onion. I'm going to find my lid, wherever I put it. <laughs> All right, let's see if this fits in. Yes, I think it'll fit in nicely. Now, if you wanted to, you could hand chop this. Since we're doing this in nice, long, slender slices, I thought we could also do the onions in slices as well. These actually turned out to be rings. I'm going to cut them in half so they don't stay as rings. Just get a bowl to put those in. Ooh, that's a strong onion. Making me cry. All right. So we're done with slicing and dicing here. Well, not dicing, just the slicing part. Yeah. So I can get rid of my food process. And I want to prep now my apples. So I've washed the apples beforehand and I love the slicer because what it will do is it will cut everything in wedges and we'll get rid of the core right away. Just pushing them through with my finger. Get rid of that core. And since they were small, I'm going to use two. I like to, when I'm slicing, turn the apple upside down because the shoulders, the top of the apple, are always level, but the bottom is not necessarily so. So it makes for a more stable um, base to press against. All right. And here we have our Slices removed. By the way, did you notice my friends visiting with me today? I've got Mr. Skull over here and a little trio of, of friends for Halloween. <laughs> All right, so what I'm gonna do is now I have these sliced as wedges. I'm just going to cut them across widthwise, what used to be their width, into diced pieces, uniform size diced pieces. I would say if you were doing a recipe, this would be about a half inch dice. And what 
the apples will do is it'll add a nice sweetness to the dish to contrast against that cabbage flavor. All right, and since I'm going to be sauteing my onion and my apple together, I'm gonna to put them in the same bowl. All righty then. And one last thing to do, I have a clove of garlic. This garlic is stubborn. I've noticed it is very difficult to peel. So what I'm going to do is I cut it in half. Oh, this one's not too, too bad. And peel, I'm peeling most of this, that skin off. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to smash the clove itself. And if there's any other skin attached, I'll be able to get rid of it then. Here, if you can see. Take that off as we go. Excellent. And with this smash, I'm just going to mince it so I can throw it in to my. to grab another little ramekin to put that in. All right. There we go. All righty then. We now have everything sous chef right? Made ahead of time, prepped ahead of time. Clean this up a little bit and show you what we're going to do next. So, I want to set a fire underneath my skillet. Sorry, I'm back so far today, but I didn't want to be smoking up my kitchen with this dish. rinse my hands. That uh, garlic was a little sticky. Okay, so I'm heating up my pan. It's good to heat your pan up first, let that heat up a little bit, then put in your oil, which um, then you heat up the oil and then add in your ingredients. And I almost forgot my kale. So I love to wrap um, my kale up in a cloth. I wet it and wrap it up in a cloth and then it may be in plastic, put it into the refrigerator so that it stays nice and crisp. I'm gonna use about three stalks of kale. Let me just add a little bit of oil to my, this is olive oil. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of that olive oil and before I get to my kale, let's get to the, well, you know what? Let's just finish here and then I'll move my camera up so that you can see what I'm doing over by the stove. Uh, I'm going to actually slice up my stalks and add them in with the apples and the onion. Let me just turn this down a second. Put it on a medium heat. I started off on high. I like to use those stalks. They add flavor and a little bit of texture. So I'm actually going to throw that in. And get that started. Along with my apples and my onions. And let those caramelize. What I want to do with this is I'm going to get the, the sugars caramelized, making them more flavorful.
end. While that starts, I'm going to take the leaves that I took off from the kale. Did you like the way I did that? I just kind of unzipped the leaf from the stem. It makes it so easy to do. And I'm just going to give it a nice chop. This is a great way to braise any cabbage, any green leafy vegetable. You can vary it up with any kind of spices that you have. Sometimes I just add in salt, pepper, and maybe um, a bag jalapeno to my greens. I'll add those in. Um, sometimes red pepper flakes taste delicious. Let me give my veggies here a soft all right so they're all getting ready now I'm going to let that saute until the onions start to get translucent. I'm gonna bring this up closer so you can see us. Yeah. All right. Let's see whether that happens. Okay, a little bit better. Hey Tina, how are you? It's good to see you. I love when people stop by and say hi. How wonderful. All right, so I'm now sauteing my greens. I'm sorry, my onions and apples. And I can bring this up closer so you can see what it's looking like. The onions are still a little bit white. But that's still fine. We're going to let that saute one minute more. I'm going to up the temperature on it a little bit since I'm keeping an eye on it now. The apples are starting to brown, which gives them a nice, like I said, caramelized flavor. <laughs> Onions and apples are a great combination, aren't they? All right, I'm going to add in that garlic that I chopped up, that I minced. So glad to have you live, Tina. Now my friends here are enjoying the smells in this kitchen. It's starting to smell really good. All right. I'm gonna give this one more stir. My onions now are getting soft, so it's a good time for me to add in my cabbage that I shredded. So I'm just gonna put that in right on top. Now I added a little bit of liquid. I'm gonna add some broth to add a little bit of flavor to it. This is just some chicken broth that I've made earlier. And I would say I put in maybe about a half cup. Oh, Tina, I'm so glad to hear it. That's exactly what I'm doing, using up my harvest vegetables. That's what was the inspiration for this dish. I'm adding in now the kale. And I've got a quite the full pan here. 
as you can see, but it's going to cook down. All right. So I've added in all of my vegetables now. Now I want to add in that wonderful seasoning. And this is a wonderful, as I said, smoky paprika. Now, if you don't want to do paprika, you could, uh, as I said, you can put in red pepper flakes. You can um, put in any seasoning that, that you like. Uh, sometimes I put in caraway, which is a great addition with the apples. You might want to try that as well. Or you could go more, um, you know, with a thyme and basil or an oregano combination, more of a Mediterranean flavor. Although I like, I like the caraway with the apples. That's always a good one. And this paprika adds a smokiness to it, which is so good. So I'm going to add in, I, I put a half here, but I want to put in two teaspoons of Now, sometimes paprika can be hot. This is a sweet, so um, be careful. If you're putting in a hot paprika, you may not want to put in as much as two teaspoonfuls of the paprika. I actually put this paprika in a jar in my cabinet because it is so strong of a smell that I don't want my, all of my spices smelling smoky. I'm going to put in about a quarter teaspoon of, I'm going to put in about a half teaspoon, half teaspoon of salt. And I'm going to put in some fresh ground pepper as well. Now what makes this a braised dish is that I added the liquid, is putting a lid on. So first what you want to do is you want to wilt the greens a bit and then put a lid on top and let it steam. see what's going on here. Sorry I don't have one of those great mirrors that you can look up. So you can see it's wilting, it's coming down, it's smaller, it's fitting into that pan a lot better. I put my uh, start to cure this. I was looking for my spatula. <laughs> I'm going to add in a little bit of broth because I can see it's cooking down because I had it open for so long. And then I'm going to put on my lid. I have it down on medium and I'm going to let that go for a few minutes. So this is one of those dishes where I'll show it to you, but it probably won't be cooked down as much as I really would like it to be. So I'll continue it afterwards and I'll take a picture of it afterwards so you can see the final dish when it's all done. But just to give you an idea, it's cooking down nicely. And as I said, you can do this just with greens. This same process works with greens any kind of cabbage that you have. You could do it with a bok choy. And it 
smells delicious and it goes great if you had some sausage to to go with this that this would be great with a side of sausage but you could even do chicken maybe even a pork pork and cabbage cabbage and pork and apples it's a great combination if you're doing a pork tenderloin This a little bit of room again. Sorry about needing to adjust here. <laughs> but here you have it. So, this is our finished dish. You can see it's steaming, it's hot. And as I said, I'm going to let this go a little bit longer so that it wilts. I'm just going to give it a taste. See how that paprika, oh, I can really smell that smoky, smoky paprika. It's fun. Oh my goodness. There's like a little sweetness from the apples that comes through with the paprika that is really, really nice. So I hope you try it. Tina, I hope you use that, the, that cabbage that's in your refrigerator. And um, I will again, I will post a picture of the finished dish down below in the comments section. So I hope you have a good day. Everybody stay well, stay healthy, and I'll see you next week. Bye, y'all. Thanks for stopping by.